Hello, my name is Danny Nolan and I'm the Director of Chassis Sim Technologies. Welcome to this latest episode of Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner. In this episode, what I want to talk to you about is modern approaches to modelling a race tyre. Now, the motivation for this episode of Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner is that from time to time, I see some old attitudes sort of crop up of going, oh yeah, you really can't model the race tyre, therefore simulation or anything to do with vehicle dynamics is always going to be a little bit of a crap shot, it's never going to work, etc, etc. Well, really, I'm here to sort of dispel a few of those myths. So, let's get started. So, I'm going to talk about traditional methods uh, for uh, measuring um, for measuring tyre performance and really what are the pros and the cons of those methods. And then I'm going to walk you through a little bit of a picture of what happens when a race tyre is up to temperature. And then we're going to discuss the chassis sim approach. And then I'm going to conclude this presentation by showing an overlay. Now, the traditional methods of tyre modelling probably circa about 10, 15, 20 years ago is that you basically, like in this illustration that you have here, is that you have a tyre fitted to a rotating drum. Now, typically, the tyre is rotating at about 20k an hour. The drum is typically rotating, uh, is rotating at, a, at um, a similar sort of speed. Now, the minuses of this it's not the most realistic of test environments, basically due to the slow rotation speed and the fact that due to the fact the contact patch is not going to be flat on the ground. However, the pluses are you're going to get a relatively good indication of what your peak slip angle and peak slip ratio is, and you get a ballpark estimate for the traction circle radius versus load characteristic. And to get going, these aren't too bad. Let me give you an example. Uh, Avon used to use this approach for uh, their tire test data uh, back in um, the late uh, back in the late nineties, and I used that to actually relatively good effect when I was uh, doing my very very preliminary uh, chassis sim models of uh, uh, F3 and Formula 3000 cars using chassis sim version one and chassis sim uh, version 2.0, and really look, they're not perfect. But it gets you going and it gets you up and running. And let's put it this way, in this business, that's always a start. Now, before discussing some modern approaches, I'd really like to talk about what happens when you get tire when you get tires up to temperature. What I've got here is a plot of pressure for a lap. Now, this is taken from actual customer data. So as you can see, I've gotten out the old spray paint tin in paint and actually blocked out the values. And obviously to protect confidentiality, I haven't shown you the complete lap, but let me walk you through the traces here. What we've got here is that we have our first trace of speed. Our second trace is, is internal tire pressure for uh, the front tire. Our third trace is tire pressure for uh, the rear. And uh, our last trace is uh, our longitudinal and lateral acceleration. Now, you can see here that our tire pressures for the front and rear are remaining relatively constant. There's a bit of a variation there, maybe about plus or minus half a PSI here. Now, what this shows us really, really clearly is that once our, once our tires are up to temperature, there's a, a, the, internal, uh, the internal temp and pressure actually remains relatively constant. Now, what that all means is that once we've achieved that constant, once we've achieved that constant condition, we can go quite a ways to actually determining what our tires look like because once you've got that stability in um, the tire pressure and uh, the, uh, the tire pressure and the tire temperature you can actually uh, the data is constant enough where you can actually start doing uh, 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 fitting a lot of sensible uh, uh, fitting a lot of sensible data to it now i'll be the first person to admit that if you're going to consider really huge changes um, to set up like you're going to do like you're going to change things like roll centers massively you're basically thinking of doing like 500 pound deltas in terms of springs yes the internal tire pressures and uh, temperatures are going to be affected. But if what you're after is basically making small changes in the setup, which is going up and down in spring by about, say, maybe rough rules of thumb by about 50 pound force, or by doing minor damper adjustments, you can go a long way using tire models 
derived from the uh, uh, from uh, the uh, from the warm up data. And let's face it, most changes that you will make as a racer, uh, most changes that you will be making as um, race engineers fall into um, that category. So we can go quite a way with a tire model derived from that. Now. I can't speak for other vehicle dynamics and uh, tire modeling um, software approaches, but I can tell you an awful lot about how the about the way that uh, chassis sim goes about um, doing tire modeling. Now, the inputs for the tire force modeling toolbox I've shown graphically below. You've got speed, you've got throttle, you've got steer, you've got your damper, di uh, you've got your damper displacements, and as you can see from the nature of those damper displacements, the other input that it also uses is uh, altitude, uh, is basically road camber and elevation and uh, elevation changes, and you use the log longitudinal and lateral data. Now, what we do is we take those inputs, b being bump, steer, speed and uh, your logged accelerations and we effectively do track replays from all that uh, track replays from all that data now what we're doing when we're doing this uh, uh, what we're doing is when we're doing those track replays what we're effectively doing is that we're effectively changing the tire model to minimize the error between your lateral between your measured acceleration from the data and the simulated data that you're getting back from the tire model. And basically the way the tire force modeling approach works is that we'll have various parameters that represent the tire model, traction circle, uh, radius versus load characteristics and temperature characteristics, things like camber properties, slip angle properties, etc., etc., And they will be modified to minimize that error. When that is finished, this is a sort of correlation that you can expect. Now, once again, this is from customer data, so I've had to be very, very coy in making sure that I've locked out all the relative values. Now, I'm not going to tell you what's simulated and what's real. You guys can figure that out for yourself. But this just show, but I will tell you this is from a street circuit, and this was done with very, very little modification for grip factor indeed actually i can tell you right now just looking at that data the modification for grip factor probably would have been that uh, probably just a little bit of a tweak through that high speed turn that's it that is shows you how powerful deriving tire data from actual race uh, uh, race da uh, data uh, uh, from race data can be now obviously i cannot speak for other simulation package uh, for other simulation and other vehicle dynamics packages and it would be irresponsible for me to do so however i can tell you right now this is the backbone of what this is one of the backbones of what makes chassis sim such a powerful package because i can tell you right now i have a number of customers in totally different categories who have never seen tire test rig data but they're achieving correlation like you see in this data primarily from deriving the uh, uh, primarily from deri uh, deriving race car data using the uh, 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 using these tools so really the moral of the tale is that if you've got good data you've got a tire that, uh, if you've got uh, good data and you are taking this data from when uh, uh, from when the car uh, uh, when the tire pressures have stabilized you can get quite a long way down the road using this data or, or if this really didn't apply i can tell you right now and this is not meant to be self-serving at all chassis sim wouldn't exist as a, a chassis sim wouldn't exist as a company on the simple principle that i would have an awful lot of disgruntled customers out there who just simply would not be able to get results now the fact that i'm still in business shows that uh, this clearly is not the case but the key is just to go back here, you take your data from when the tire pressures and tire temperatures, uh, 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 from when the tire pressures and tire temperatures have stabilised, and once you've got that, you then use tools such as the tire force modelling toolbox to take good race uh, uh, to take good race data, so you can get uh, so the tire modeling algorithms can do what they do. And if you've done your job right, you've collected the data appropriately, you ma you've made sure that you're feeding it with good quality data. That is the sort of correlation that you can expect. And it goes an awful, 
awful long way to telling you an awful lot about your race, uh, uh, about what your tyre is doing. Now, am I claiming that uh, we at Chassis Sam or my competitors have the perfect panacea that will tell you of what everything the tyre is going to do? Of course we don't. And to claim and to claim that we would do so would be clearly irresponsible. However, if you go about using your data carefully, if you go about using your, uh, to, uh, uh, if you go about collecting your data properly, if you go about making sure you've got good data, you can derive an awful lot of setup information from tyre models derived from that data and that, ladies and gentlemen, is the proof in the pudding. Now, there's an awful lot of what I could say about what happens as some um, tyres get up to temperature, but this is currently a research area that we're working on with Chassis Sim, and I think we can, I'll uh, let you know about that in my good time. But the moral of the tale is this. If you've got good race data and you're taking that race data from warmed up data, correlation like this, and a correlation like this is a fait accompli, and you can use that quite effectively to determine an awful lot of where to go with the setup for the car.